Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Commissioners, this is Kimberly's first time calling roll, so please speak up. She doesn't know your voices the way I do. Okay. Oh, we're ready to call the roll. Mr. Townsend. Here. Mr. Poole. Here. Ms. Woodard. Yes. Mr. Allen. Here. Mr. Hollinsworth. Ms. Mason. Here. Mr. Gray. Here. Mr. Powell. Here. Ms. Boyd. Here. We have a quorum. All right. Uh, yeah. Is there a motion for approval of the minutes from the September 3rd meeting? Motion to approve. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, we're good to go with the minutes. Uh, under new business, we do have one add-on request for the agenda. That's Autumn Wood Subdivision Phase 3. Uh, is there a motion to add this to the agenda tonight? So moved. Do we have a second? second. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, we're going to add this down to item number six at the bottom there. Uh, item number one is Sleepy Hollow section five. Uh, is there a motion to put this on the floor for discussion? So moved. A second? Second. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, we're ready for item one. Gina. Getting to my stuff. Um, Kimberly's, yeah, she's clicking for me. So, yeah. Anyway, this is Sleepy Hollow Section 5, and um, it, this had been previously um, come before us a little bit, and but then they waited too long. Things changed with the, the wetlands and the water uh regulations and everything so they had to come back and to resubmit so this what you see are these lots is the only ones that they can do is right right here all of this is wet now they cannot get into it at all so those are the ones and the reyes's are buying the buying the property i believe from from the batsons and uh so we just really need to do a preliminary approval of this um we don't have the bond yet we have the bond numbers so when we get the bond more than likely they are going to do a lot of the infrastructure and everything like that before they try to do a final plat and sell any lots and, and get it recorded so we just need a preliminary approval for this and um, then we'll go on to the bond next okay are there other questions or discussion on this item oh yeah one thing i'm glad you reminded me you know how we have to uh, put this detail on here about when there's not enough room for to meet our regulations about the driveway um, that is being put in here so you guys can see that you can approve it the way that's the way it will be once it's built and if that's good with all of you then that's the way it needs to be with the um, with the motion and everything Okay, and that's like a, we have a little detail on our drawing on our packet here. Yeah, you have it on there. Is it made for an entrance into the side of the house? Um, usually, sit, uh, these a lot of these are in the front. Sometimes, depending on if it's a corner lot, it could be on the side. Um, I don't know how they'll end up doing it. We hadn't seen any building plans. I mean, you know, the houses, how the houses are going to be built on it or anything. Okay, are there any other questions? I'm not hearing any. Uh, is there a motion for approval then? I'd like to make a motion that we approve it depending on this, the outline as this states. Okay. Is there a second? Second. All right. We have a motion and a second. We're ready to vote. Mr. Allen? Yes. Ms. Mason? Yes. Mr. Gregg? Yes. 
Ms. Boyd? Yes. Mr. Townsend? Yes. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Powell? Yes. She called okay. you first, David. She called me? Yeah, and, and Mr. Townsend okay. thought it was him. So <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> I'm two I'll say yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm two people. <laughs> you're, you're two people tonight, Mr. Townsend? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Seven to zero passes. All right. Uh, item number two is the bond for Sleepy Hollow Section 5. Is there a motion to put this on the floor for discussion? So moved. Uh, is there a second? Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, Any opposed? We're ready for item number two. In your packets, you have copies of the bonds that uh, Public Works has sent, Water Wastewater has sent, and Street uh, Electric has sent for the street lights. And down at the bottom of the one for the electric department, the street lights, the shortest one, is the total number for the bond, which is $613,919.39, and that is with a 20% add-on. And that's what we do normally, just in the event that it doesn't get done and the city has to do it and, you know, like the cost goes up over, over a couple of years or whatever of, of it not being done. More than likely, what will happen with this is that they will do a lot of the infrastructure themselves uh, before they try to bond because with the water wastewater being such a large amount um, that's more than likely that's what they'll end up doing so we need to um, just approve the bond and that will go on to the Board of Mary and Alderman for them to approve and when they get when they get it to us accept that as well so um, when they get that bond they can whatever they choose to do if they want to want to start the construction or not or they can bond for the whole amount and that total was 613 613 and 39 cents and it's at the bottom of this sheet right here total amount down here. Not fine. Gotcha. do you not have that one I'm not fine. the electric we do it is right at the bottom down there okay All right, is there a discussion about this bond, the bond amount? <laughs> motion to approve. Okay. Second. We have a motion and a second. Ms. Boyd? Yes. Mr. Townsend? Yes. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Powell? Yes. Mr. Allen? Yes. Ms. Mason? Yes. Mr. Gregg? Yes. Seven to zero, it passes. All right, item number three is uh, Robert Fletcher rezoning request, AG2 to RP80. Is there a motion to put this item on the floor for discussion? So, so move. I'll take one as a motion and second. the other one as a second. That's good. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, we're ready for item number three, Jenna. Okay. Item number three is uh, Mr. Robert Fletcher uh, is requesting a rezoning from Ag2 to RP80. RP this is a county zoning, but it is in the planning region. That's why it's before us. Um, he plans on to cut out a lot um, for his daughter to build on. And um, that's basically, that's just in a nutshell why it's before you. It's in the planning region. And he wants to build his daughter to be able to build a house on his property there, or part of the property. That uh, you'll have a subdivision plat coming to you after this gets done as well. Not not tonight. Next next meeting. What is the RP80 comparable to in our? Well, I'm assuming 80 means 80,000 square feet. The way ours is R40 okay. is RS40 is R40 is is 40,000 square feet. So I did not look that up in the book uh, in their book and. Um, I didn't call them and I didn't ask Steve's art so uh, I'm assuming that's what it is so that is a county number yes it's okay. a county it's okay. a county number okay. yes ma'am and uh, I spoke I misspoke the plat will not come to before you all because it's only a wooden lot um, subdivision out of his property 
um, but I'm telling you all that there will be a subdivision uh, of this property if if it's rezoned by the county so basically what you all are doing you're recommending to the county about this zoning to be changed it's out on clarity road I don't know if y'all know where that is mm -hmm. I'm sorry. So I make a motion that we you, approve your, this to be submitted. You just your your motion needs to be just that you approve it and you recommend it to the county to for the, county. for the zoning change. Yes. Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Mr. Powell. Yes. Mr. Allen. Yes. Miss Mason. Yes. Miss Boyd. Yes. Mr. Townsend. Yes. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Gregg? Yes. 7 to 0 passes. All right. Item number four is uh, a right of way abandonment request on Hill and Matthew Street. Uh, is there a, a motion to put this on the floor for discussion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. I think I heard a second somewhere. Ms. Boyd. Uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. Uh -huh. Any opposed? All right. What do we got on this, Gina? Well, this right, um, this piece of property is right beside the um, fire station, right up where they used to sell the Christmas decorations and everything. Do y'all remember mm -hmm. that? This and there is a right of way down the down between two pieces of property. There are no utilities in it. It's just for some reason there's an old right of way easement there. And uh, Mr. Sloan is requesting that this right of way be abandoned. Of course. There's no other, other property owners on each side, so he will be the only on, only owner that will, you know, benefit from the width of the property. So that is what he is asking, and um, have no idea what his plans are for the um, for the property. But evidently, he has something something planned, something or he wouldn't have it. So I don't see any reason not to do it. No, ma'am. I mean, the property owners. Is that what your the city's thinking? Okay. I'm sorry. Is that is that what the staff is recommending? Yes, ma'am. I mean, that, yes, everybody has signed off yeah, on it. They've okay. approved it. I mean, there's no, like I said, there's no utilities okay. to be moved. There's nothing in there that would uh, keep okay. the right away from being abandoned at all. Okay. So is that something that he would have to purchase at some point? That is up to the board. The board will decide that we have an ordinance prepared that will go to the board uh, their next meeting and um, it will be up to them be up to mr. Gregg and the rest of his his aldermen okay. yes ma'am um, see this is the alley right here in yellow uh -huh. and this on each side well actually there's three this, this, and this. That is all owned by Mr. Sloan. And for some reason, there's still an old alley down through there. But like I said, you can't, there's no utilities or anything in that. And uh, he's, for some reason, requesting it to be abandoned. A motion to approve. Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Ms. Boyd. Yes. Mr. Townsend? Yes. He said yes. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Powell? Yes. Mr. Allen? Yes. Ms. Manson? Yes. Mr. Gregg? Yes. Seven to zero, it passes. All right, item number five is the final plat of Legacy Section 7. Uh, do we have a motion to put this on the floor for discussion? So moved. There a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All right. We're ready for item number five, Gina. This is a three lot subdivision. Um, I think it is probably almost the last, I'm not sure, but it's almost the last part of the legacy PUD that um, it will be platted more than likely. 
Um, there may be a few lots somewhere in the other sections that hasn't been built on, but they may be platted. But anyway, this is the last section that I, I didn't even realize this was here until I got to looking into the master plan. But anyway, this is on Oakland Road. It's right before you get to um, the terraces at Legacy, the town, the 11 acres that you all have looked at before. It's right before that. And um, the plans have been approved by and signed by Terry Beers with Water Waste Water, those construction plans, and they've been sent to the state. Um, what did you, Terry, yeah. is there any time frame? I mean, time frame about the coming back from the state? Is this the lots where they've been doing all the construction and things going on on it? Okay. He's, yeah. Yeah. One shaking his head, one saying yes, ma'am. So. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay, I haven't been over there in a while, so I had no idea they were using that. So, anyway, but it, we're um, just because the state has not approved them yet, we're asking for conditional approval. And um, Mr. Doris is here. He says he plans to do the construction. He does not plan to bond um, before you know we get it recorded. So that has to be all into the satisfaction of Mr. Beers and everything uh, before the, all that's taken care of, and anything else that needs to be done. Uh, to be able to record it and then start selling lots the three lots so but we're asking for conditional approval just because TDEC the, the plans are not back from from the state yet to uh, for approval motion for approval second, second. we have a motion Al yep was the second Mr. Poole Yes. Mr. Allen. Yes. Ms. Mason. Yes. Ms. Boyd. Yes. Mr. Townsend. Yes. Mr. Poole. Mr. Poole. Oh, me. Who yes. was how? Who did you get? <laughs> Mr. Gray. Yes. <laughs> Seven to zero passes. All right, and item number six is our uh, add-on request for Otter Void Subdivision Phase 3. Uh -huh. The Otter Void add-on request, um, we're asking for preliminary approval of Phase 3. Well, you need to get it on the floor, don't you? Uh, we can. <laughs> I don't know if when we put it on the agenda if we covered that, but we need, I guess we would need a motion to discuss it. So is there a okay. Is there a second? Second. Great. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Okay. Autumn Wood has come back in. Mr. Um, Daryl Adler has purchased it from Jerry Clark. Um, it has come back in before us, and um, he has uh, the construction plans they've given us are for um, both sections three and four, but we're only approving three right now. And the reason um, they're just trying to get the preliminary approval so he can get in there while we still got good weather and he got, wants to start doing uh, some of the infrastructure that has to be put in. So um, all, um, let's see, Terry, plans have been sent to TDEC or they've been, you've approved them? Uh, they're being, so. okay. Okay, so that's what's happening. I, I, I know Terry just got them. And section three, those plans are already yeah but okay so that's in okay uh but the way i understand it from mr bagwell kind of three and four construction plans tie together okay so anyway we're asking for preliminary approval for phase three is what we're doing and strictly the reason being is so that we can he can start his his construction to get the infrastructure in and uh he I don't know that he'll bond any. I don't know if he's going to bond any. He may do it all, but he may come back. We may come back later with a bond for that when he gets ready to get it recorded and, um, you know, start selling the lots. But that was him. Uh, he and uh, Mr. Adler and David Brewer had a, had a conversation before David left, and that was what David told me, that, that the main reason for the preliminary approval, he was asking for that to be able to do that. So it's a total of 16 lots. Mm-hmm. For phase three. three. Y'all are only looking at phase three right now. Phase okay. four, gotcha. plat has not come in. Gotcha. The construction gotcha. plans have, but the gotcha. plat has not. Okay. And the staff is good with, with that request? Yes, sir, we are. 
Motion to approve. Second. 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 <laughs> we have a motion and a second. Miss Boyd? Yes. Mr. Townsend? Yes. Mr. Poole? Yes. Mr. Allen? Yes. Miss Mason? Yes. Mr. Gregg? Yes. Seven zero passes. All right. Uh, under old business and other business, did you want to talk about the DZA? Um, no, let's go. Let's do Rob Mont first, please. Do what, you? The Rob Mont discussion. The Rob Mont bond. Oh, okay. It's just a discussion. There's no action to be taken on it at this time. Do we need a motion to okay? No. Let's go with it then. <laughs> okay. Um, this Rob Mont out there beside Tracy Langston. Um, uh, we've we've come to before y'all before asking uh, talking to you about the Robmont bond asking it to be reviewed uh, renewed um, our regulations state that basically you can only have two renewals this was started this was approved the final plat was approved in 2011 and we've had that many renewals since then staff has no staff has to say, tell you that we're going to ask you to call the bond we're telling you this preliminary in in advance of it do of it of it of it coming before you um i've already talked to mr um, hold on what's his name mr bill wyatt telling him that you know it's going to be coming due uh, i think it's the end of november i believe i forget exactly when it is but anyway it's coming soon so we wanted to talk to you all and tell you that staff's recommendation is going to be to call the bond and that's basically because our regulations tell us we have to um, this planning commission has been gracious enough to extend it all these years since 2011 so um, that's just something um, that we wanted to bring bring up to you all and tell you that you know look that's what we're going to do you all have to think about it and, and decide what you're going to do we're going to have um, I guess Mr. Wyatt and whomever else is a representative for this property probably come to the next meeting um, when we do call the bond or ask you to call the bond and uh, that's I mean I, we just wanted to bring it to your attention that that's what we have to do I have a question I'm trying to understand so 2011 was when this started that's when it was and approved we have, and we have already renewed twice the twi the two times that we're allowed to do yes we've already done that yes ma'am and it's up for renewal again no we've done it more than twice oh okay 2013 would be when it was the two times was oh. up and then we've done it over since then because uh, well for some reason that property has not just has not taken off like some of the other properties it has not developed so i guess the way that the, the property owner and the developer thought it would um i really can't tell you what the reason is okay. but I'm just bringing this to your attention telling you that we're going to ask you to call the bond and uh, just so that it's in your mind you can if you need to ask questions over the next month or so then you know you can ask questions of us and everything like that and like I said all parties will be notified uh, like I said I've already made one one phone call to Mr. White telling him that you know it's not gonna be long before the bond is coming up to be discussed and everything so they, uh, they haven't sold any of those lots have they? Mm -mm. Not a, not a, I'm not David. <laughs> that Rob Mott subdivision, uh, when I talked to Chief Greer, I mean, uh, not Greer, but uh, at the fire department, uh, we're, we're in need of, for maintaining our our um, level three for fire insurance reasons we are right now in need of telling the insurance companies who who rate us that we found a place to put a fire department this area is where everyone agrees it needs to go somewhere in this area uh, a couple of months ago i put it on the board of mayor and all agenda to buy this piece of property before it got completely developed because you've got access from uh, South Main and then you've got access on the other side. It, it reaches both sides, but it drops off the hill a little bit before it drops into the back. And 
we could redevelop and sell off the north side, have what we need for the fire station on the south side, and it's close enough to town, but the politics are pulling it to try to put another non-tax-paying project at the city's expense out on Batson Boulevard, and that's where the politics, I think, got this shot down. And uh, when it was on the agenda to approve to do this, and um, I would hope that the, the board could continue renewing until maybe cooler heads or, uh, or whatever look at this property again and not let the politics put another government paid non tax paying project down on Benson Boulevard and put a fire station closer to the town where the people are instead of out there in the middle of nowhere. So if you develop it, that's going to make it harder to do and kind of put a death nail in ever getting that fire station right there where the chief said it would be a good place to do, but uh, like I said, their politics are playing here. One thing I do want to correct Mr. Snead on, there is no access to South Main as of right now. When we developed that out through there on, on Tom Austin, we told all, like Tracy Langston, uh, Mr. Grimes, we, it, we kept a buffer down through there to keep the commercial away from the residential that was still there. So as of now, right now, there is no access to onto South Main. What would be involved in getting an access? I guess the board or the planning commission. I mean, I ha I'd have to look into it to see exactly how we did it, but that that is what was done when that was developed down through there as commercial. So as of right now, there is no access onto South Main. Does that property go all the way over to South Main? It does. It does. It's yes. Not an access. Mm -mm. No, it's just like Tracy Langston. His property goes all the way. Dr. Grimes goes all the way to um, South Main. There is no access to any of those properties onto South Main. And we did that for a reason, to buffer the residential from the commercial. So, but anyway, the, this bond just wanted to let you guys be aware that that's what's coming down the pike. And, uh, and telling you why staff will have the recommendation that staff will have. We, we are, we have no choice. I mean, we had no choice last year. <laughs> uh, so, but we have no choice. We have to abide by the regulations that we uphold. Is this a price thing, the, the reason those are not selling? I can't, I don't know what the price is on any of the lots. I haven't asked anyone. Um, but like I said, I did talk to Mr. Wyatt back about two or three weeks ago, something like that. I made a phone call telling him that, hey, look, it's going to be coming up for discussion and then either renewal or calling it. Um, so I just wanted him to be aware. What would have to be done to get it? What would the bond do? What would it do to complete it? What, what's like it to be done out there? You know, I'm not sure what the current bond is amount. Eighteen. Okay, I guess this is it, because this was November the fifth, two thousand eighteen. So the bond is one hundred and five thousand three hundred thirty-six dollars. And what would that? It finishes out the paving. I think the curbing is still there. Is that? Do you remember, Terry? Uh, yeah, water, water and sewer, sewer water and sewer is there. So basically, I, it's just the final code of maybe I think so. I be. think so. It, it may be some curbing. I'm not sure. Alan would be able to tell us for sure, and he he didn't. I, I forgot to call him and ask him today. So, uh, but yeah, it's. I think it's. I mean, with that amount, it's not seem to be that that much. I don't know. If, there may be some lights in there as well, but it's doesn't really tell me here exactly what it's for on this one. Oh, wait a minute, it does. I'm sorry. Streets drainage and certification is $63,376. The electric department, 26000 And inflation and administrative costs is $15,960 for a total of that 100, what did I tell you? 105,336. So those are what, those are the things that are left to be done. Okay. We're aware.
I'll be the AI office. I wanted to just let you all know what is coming um, onto the VZA, and I think Kimberly has popped them up there. Miss Lisa Jones lives on Bourne Street, and she has the house on the corner. Do you know who I'm talking about, David? Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Uh, oh, who used to live there? She lives at, at 701 Fifth Avenue. With Mr. Alford used to live there. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. She bought Mr. Alford's house. Okay. And behind her, is another small cabin looking house out she may have demolished it already i don't know anyway she wants to build a house for her parents to live in and what she's wanting to do is uh, look make it look something like is in the neighborhood so she's going to have because of it being a small lot and the zoning of rs10 she's having to ask for a um, 10 foot variance on the north side Instead of 15 feet, it would be 10 feet because when you go up a second story, you have to add five feet to the sides and um, to, and reduce the south sides. She says reduce the south side setback to five feet. So that would be reduced to five feet. She also wants the house to be able to be that sort of the average of the houses that are on the street, not pushed way back the way that one is it, to bring it forward. So that is what she is asking. That will be before the BZA board next week. Um, Mr. Joe Raglan is asking for a variance to build a house on at 1700 John L. Patterson, and he wants to change the setback on the west on 17th Avenue West to uh, 15 feet instead of 25. So it would be a 10 foot variance is what he's asking for. And I haven't got into all of this just to see. But, you know, over there, I think you bought, this is one of the lots that was bought from the city and county, I believe. So, you know, those lots over there are either probably non-conforming or they're smaller than 7,000 square feet. I mean, they are non-conforming if they're 7,000, so uh, below the 7,000 square feet. So that is the other thing, the other, one other item. I have five altogether. Um, Mr. Measle, you know, we've been talking about Mr. Measle for a while now over on Gorham Avenue. Well, Mr. Measle needs to get his building built, and he's run into a wall because of the industrial board and the city are kind of at odds. <laughs> the city has a, like a indefinite uh, lease on that piece of property that the right of way needs to be abandoned to be able for him to build his building. But the industrial board says, well, the industrial board says, well, we still own it. So we're kind of at a stalemate. So in order for him to get his building built, he is asking, he's going to be asking for a variance. And this man has, he's jumped through all of our hoops. Site plan, I um, can't remember how many things we did for him, but anyway, the site plan for sure. Oh, the subdivision, I think we put three lots together. There were three lots behind uh, O'Reilly's that were Miss Guthrie's, and they were separate lots, so we could, they were combined into one. Um, if they haven't been combined, they will be once the right of way goes away. And so, of course, we have the right of way abandonment. So, we've got several things going on, but he needs to get this building built in Electrolux. He does work for Electrolux. So, Electrolux has told him, You've got to get your building built and you've got to get your stuff out of our space because we've got to have this. So, he's kind of between a rock and a hard place. So, he is asking for a variance as well. And I think it's a 25 foot variance, I believe, from um, off of industrial. And uh, his address will be industrial. That's what um, E911. Instead of Gorham Avenue, you know, that he'll build over top of where Gorham is and everything. So his address will become industrial, South Industrial, when he gets everything built. Um, I have two from uh, Jacob Fan and JRF Builders. One is, let's see, what is this one? Mm. Maple Street, I'm sorry. Didn't have an address. We just have a uh, map and parcel on that. Um, he is, I think one of them is a corner lot. This one is, yeah, this one is a corner lot on Maple and Grace Street. He would like to have, with the corner lot, you have two fronts, one side and one rear. And you get to choose which is your front, which is your rear, and which is your side. He's asking for one of those fronts to become a side. 
he wants it reduced to 20, uh, he wants it reduced to 10 feet, so it would be a 20 foot set, uh, variance is what it would be. And uh, I've got, I've got the, the way the lot looks, if anybody wants to see it and everything. So, but that's over on, on Mabel Street. Um, and then the other, the other one that he has is on 10th Avenue East. And um, the housing authority is right back in this area. This is a lot that is in blue there. And he is wanting to build a house there and he's asking for a, he's asking for a 20 foot variance for the, the rear setback to be 10 feet instead of the 30 is what he's asking. So he backs up to the, the rear setback is here against the housing authority back there where there's really no houses, it's mostly open land. I hope this is all I have for the BZA for the rest of the year. <laughs> so anyway, um, anybody have any concerns about any of these um, items going to the BZA? You're welcome to show up this next um, Tuesday night. The Lisa Jones thing, the first one, mm -hmm. is that on the the corner lot there or the lot next the to lot her? next to her yeah no she's the pink and blue building my, my, my granddaughter calls it the castle house is what she calls it and she's behind the where she's wanting the variance to build a house for her parents is behind there is a lot behind there okay so yeah the, the house on the corner is in the historic district but that's not that's not i don't believe no in the historic district thing it's it allows it, to move back and forth to right. line up with the streetscape. Right, but she would like to, and she may end up asking you to go into <laughs> Right. But, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I think we may have told her already, but I, we will tell her again to talk to you um, before she does any building or anything, just to make sure if she has any, any plans to uh, go into the historic district, you know what I mean? So, a new infill. But... Anyway, if, um, if you all have any um, concerns, please call me over either tomorrow or Monday next week and tell me or show up at the meeting. Um, like I said, 5 o'clock Tuesday, the 8th. All right. I have a question. Is there anything else? Jeff has a question. Jeff has a question. Yeah. Back to this Rob Mont bond, if... Uh, this board decides not to call, is it the board of mayor and alderman ultimately that makes that decision? I mean, it'll go, they'll have to accept it, yes sir. I mean, if, if you all choose to say, yes, we're gonna let them renew the bond, they will have to give us a new bond to replace the one that we have. And then that bond will come to the board of mayor and alderman to, to accept. You guys have to accept it. I don't, uh, just so y'all have the knowledge of it, I don't think that that was the reason. I don't think it was politics that kept Mr. Sneed's motion from, from passing. I just don't think that uh, the majority thought that that was the appropriate lot, and especially at the cost. I think it's around a million and a half, uh, somewhere in that neighborhood. Uh, Is that for all five lots? Is that for the whole thing, the whole subdivision? The whole I hadn't heard any price, that's why I'm asking. Um, he's been talking with Mr. McKinney, and um, it never got a second, so it never got on the floor. I do recall that being the price because I had talked to this gentleman about the sale of it and what they were asking for a good while back, mm -hmm. and I thought it was quite unreasonable at the time. Well, I don't know, uh, you know, just as my personal opinion, uh, to build a fire hall, that's, that's an expensive piece of property. And if it's going to take at least two of those lots, then you're only looking at being able to turn three. And uh, so I think that was the reason that it never went any further. To my knowledge, uh, Batson Parkway has never even been discussed as far as putting one out there. Or by the board of mayor and alderman anyway. Mm -hmm. 
it does look like that would be a good location, but I agree, that's expensive land to put a fire hall on. Yeah, as far as the location itself, I, I would not be opposed to it. Right. My opposition is, is cost. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. So that's just kind of to give y'all a heads up on. Thanks for okay. feeling us in. Yeah, I appreciate mm -hmm. that. Appreciate that. But I feel like, you know, if we've already renewed beyond what we're supposed to do, we have no other choice but to call it due. That's just my feelings, but. I, I would go along with staff. I, you know, mm -hmm. we have to play fair. We can't make the gym mowers and, and our local people, uh, maybe they can get the two, but when they want to go further and further, we're giving somebody out of Clarksville That's 10 right. or 11 times. Uh, I don't see that as being good. I don't either. That question. Yes, sir. If you call the bond and the city completes the work at the time of the sale of the property, does the city recoup their money or how? Does that bond that is for the city to do the work. Okay, so the city gets paid through the bond. Yes. That's why we. That's why we always have a bond for. The different infrastructures and everything lights and um, water and sewer and um, the roads and everything like that uh, in the event you know a lot of people have good intentions and everything like that to get everything done and then something might happen and in the event it doesn't get done then we have that avenue to fall back on and can get it done through that through those monies they were will that bond be updated to today's prices? Uh, yeah, I'm sure it will. <laughs> it usually is. Usually, it, usually every time we renew a bond, um, you know, Alan will look at the price of of, pave, of the paving, uh, the the asphalt, and everything like that. Um, and uh, probably the electric won't change unless unless some of the lighting fixtures go up a little bit. Um, as far as the sewer and everything, which is not a not anything there that's already in um, I'm sure those things go up as well um, the culverts the the pipe whatever they have to put in there um, and that and that's why we always ask these departments to give us an updated amount to go for the new bond and then and then um, sometimes I think most of the time we even add some if they don't do anything you know we always have a 20 percent inflation so if, if they don't feel like they need anything more than what they already have, then we still have that 20% to cover the inflation. It would be interesting to see what it was at 2000, 2011 and what it would be right now. I'll mm -hmm. probably tell you. October 6, 2011, the subdivision and bond of $95,760 was approved by the Planning Commission on February 3rd, 2011. So it hasn't gone up much at all. It's 105 yeah. or 95. So in eight years. Mm -hmm. But that's, um, let's see. It sounds like the reason that they're not selling is you got it priced too high. Yes. I have no idea. I mean, and I, you know, I'm not the, I'm not the seller or I'm not the owner or anything. So um, I don't even, you know, I just don't know. And did I understand that you said there's a 20% inflation added each time it's renewed? Yeah, that's what, I mean, sometime back in the, back in, well, I mean, I think we added on there. I don't, I'm not sure when we started doing that. There's, okay, there's because, a time that we started that doing that. That doesn't add up. Right. And, and, and yeah, that's $19,000 just one time. Right. Uh, at one time, I'm, they started doing that. I'm not sure when they yeah, started doing it, but we did start doing it. But on the last one, the inflation administrative cost was fifteen thousand nine sixty. Yeah, that's not twenty percent. So I don't it might have been ten percent. So, but anyway, that's the latest bond that we have. So, good job, Gina. <laughs> it's been a it's been a, it's been a week. So. All right. Do we have any other discussions? I do not, unless y'all do. Um, any thoughts on the BZA? 
or y'all can call me. Just call me if you do, please. All right. If there's nothing else, I'm going to hit the gavel. Sure.